As an OBS Studio beginner, I understand how frustrating it can be not having good audio quality in your videos and live streams. After all, audio is probably the most important aspect when it comes to the quality of your content. If that's not good, it can be close to impossible to retain viewers. That's why in today's video, I'm going to be covering everything OBS audio from adding sources correctly, improving the quality of cheap microphones, balancing your game audio, and much more, all without plugins. All right, so jumping into my OBS project all I've set up here is one scene with one source that being the Elgato 4k s capture card along with its audio that you see here in the mixer which was added automatically when adding this video capture device source the first thing we want to take a look at here are our global audio settings so to get to that you're gonna to want to go to the right hand side and select the settings button that's gonna pop up this window where you can go to the audio tab and this is where you're gonna find the global audio devices. Now within this section, you're going to see two different types of audio, desktop audio and mic auxiliary audio. The desktop audio you may have enabled by default, but ideally, unless you just plan on capturing whatever audio flows through your desktop or your speakers, I would recommend disabling this because you're going to see later in this video how you can set granular audio controls based on the application that you want to pull audio from versus just pulling all of the audio that might be playing through the computer. As for the mic auxiliary audio device, this is where you can select your microphone. So in this case, we're going to go with the cheap microphone that I plugged in here, that being the Toner TC310 USB mic. So we're gonna select that. I don't have any additional microphones I'm planning on adding. So we will select apply and okay. And then you'll see within the mixer here, my microphone audio source added. Now, one key thing to understand here are the global audio devices versus your source audio devices. Since the microphone here that I add, it falls under global audio devices any additional scenes that I add and I eventually switch to, that microphone will follow in each of those scenes. Now, the Elgato 4K S audio that you see above that, that is from a particular source within this scene. So that will not carry to the other scenes that might be in my OBS project. Now, right now you can see the decibel level or the volume output set to the max for both of these audio sources. And that's not how you would typically want to keep it. As a general rule of thumb, if you're just working with a gameplay and microphone audio source, the game audio should not stretch into the yellow area. And ideally, you'd want to test this out while playing a game to see how loud it will truly get. But you want to have that game audio coming in at the minus 25 to minus 20 decibel levels. And then looking at the microphone, first things first, you're going to want to have this about six inches to a foot away from your mouth. That way you can get the best sounding audio audio quality because if it's too far away, your mic audio is just not going to sound very good. I also highly recommend to get a microphone stand. This is what I have my Elgato Wave 3 on right now. It allows you to lift the microphone up off the desk so that you don't hear those bumps and booms that might occur when you hit your desk accidentally. And you can much more easily control how far away the microphone is from your mouth. The one I have here is from Fifine and I will link it down below if you guys wanna check it out. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do with your microphone is physically adjust the gain knob so that you have it comfortably set and not peaking on the microphone itself. And I have mine set pretty comfortably here. I don't want it to, to max out like that. See that, that's peaking like crazy. So now I'm gonna go into the software and reduce the gain just a little bit until we are consistently hitting the yellow with this microphone. That's pretty good. Before we mess with any settings, take a look at the environment that your microphone is sitting in. Are you in a space with a lot of hard surfaces, like a hardwood floor? You can improve the audio by just changing what is around you in the room, like add soft objects, add carpets, add couches. All of these types of things can reduce the echo and the overall noise in a room. If you've done your best effort with that, there's some great filters that you can add to make your microphone sound studio level, even if it isn't. So to do that, we're gonna go to our microphone audio source in our mixer, right click, and then go to filters. And this is where we're gonna be able to add these OBS filters that are built right within the software. Let's click on the plus button and the first filter we are gonna add is noise suppression. Select okay. And the method we're gonna use is RN noise, which is good quality, more CPU usage. But if you have a you know relatively newer modern PC, 
this really doesn't take up much resources at all and it does a really good job at getting rid of any remaining droning or fan sounds in your background the next audio source we're going to add is the noise gate select that Select OK. The purpose of this filter is to mute your microphone audio if it drops below a certain decibel level. This is great for when you stop talking so background noises or droning sounds won't come through the microphone when you're not speaking. Now the numbers that they give you here are a great starting point, but since I've already tested this out with this cheaper microphone, I found that the best numbers for me are minus 43 for the close threshold and then open threshold 38. And the reason why I push these down is because at the higher points that were set by default, I experienced some clipping in the audio due to the fact that a louder volume of sound needed to come through in order to open up this gate. So if you're experiencing audio that doesn't sound quite right when you start talking or in talking, tweak these to be lower, but not low enough to where background noise starts coming through. The next filter you guys can add is the three band equalizer. Go ahead and select okay. And the purpose of this filter is to adjust the tone, shape, and character of your voice. So if you wanna get that more radio or high quality podcasting sound, this is where you can make that magic happen. Now the settings that I typically like to set this at is having the high frequency at about two, the mid frequency, I keep that as is, and then I put the low frequency also at around two. You can feel free to play around with this, but I would recommend keeping the shape the way that I have it. The next filter we're gonna wanna add here is the compressor. The purpose of this filter is to reduce the microphone audio level if you are screaming into the microphone to prevent it from peaking or clipping, but at the same time, boost the audio if you are talking very quietly into the microphone so that it can still be heard. So let's start here by looking at the threshold. This is how much we want the audio to be reduced once it hits that maximum point. You can comfortably set this anywhere between minus 15 and minus 20 decibel levels. I liked minus 18, so we're just gonna keep that. Looking at the ratio is how much we want that audio to be minimized or compressed once it does hit this threshold. 10 is definitely too high. It should really be between three to four. I'm gonna go with three here for my ratio. The output gain down here boosts the level of the audio after the compression has been applied. So anywhere between three and six is pretty good. I'm gonna go with about four. And then attack and release, we'll keep that as default. One more filter we wanna add to the microphone. So let's select the plus button. And this time we are gonna add a limiter. Select okay. The way that this filter works is literally in its name as it limits the level of audio that is allowed to be hit. So so whatever you set here, once it hits that point, any audio that tries to go above it is going to be automatically brought down. So anywhere between minus three to minus six is a good range for this and possibly a little bit more depending on how you've set the gain of your microphone up on the hardware itself. But for this microphone, I'm just gonna keep it at minus six. I'm comfortable with it there. Let's go ahead and close this out. And I think now we gotta hear a little compare and contrast test. This is a test of the Tonar microphone without any filters applied whatsoever. Listen to the audio. How does it sound? Do you like the way it sounds naturally without any filters applied? And now this is what the microphone sounds like with the filters that we just added in OBS applied to the microphone. How do you like the quality? Does it sound better than what it sounded without the filters? Let me know which one you think is the best in the comment section below. Now up next, I'm gonna show you guys how you can add specific application audio sources to your OBS project. That means Discord chat, Spotify, your browser sources. So to do that within one of your scenes, in the sources section, go ahead and select the plus button. And then here you're gonna wanna add an application audio capture source. Once you select that, we can name it Spotify, for example. Select the window dropdown and find the corresponding app that you're looking for. In my case, it's Spotify Premium. So I'm gonna select that. Window match priority, you can keep the same. Select OK. Now if I play some audio through that source, you're gonna see that it is coming through. Now, just like we did earlier in the video, you're gonna wanna balance this audio out as well. You don't wanna have your music blaring all over your gameplay and your own voice. That's just not gonna sound good. So I put together a more detailed guideline for where you want your audio to fall under depending on the source type that it is. Your music, you wanna put that on the lowest end of the spectrum, somewhere around the minus 40 to minus 35 decibel level at the maximum. Your gameplay audio should be able to be heard over the music 
music. Discord chat should be able to be heard over the gameplay and then the sound coming from your microphone, your own voice should be heard over everything because you are the star of the show. Just as another reminder, make sure it's not peeking into the red. Next up here, I wanna share with you guys a very handy audio trick that a lot of people aren't aware of. So what am I getting at here? Well, if you go into your advanced audio properties, so you can just right click anywhere within the mixture, select advanced audio properties, and you scroll all the way over to the right hand side where you see tracks. Under that heading, you're gonna see six different tracks across each of the audio sources within your OBS project. If you have an audio source selected under any of these track numbers, the audio will be recorded as a part of that track. Now, if I don't want the audio recorded on a particular track, let's say track number one, I don't want Spotify audio, then I can uncheck track number one across from this Spotify audio source. And then if I close this out and I go to my settings and I go to output and let's just go to advanced real quick. Here within the stream settings, you can see the audio track that will be utilized for recording to the stream itself. Maybe for the stream, I'm okay with having the Spotify audio in the track, but for my VOD, I wanna have that to be cleaner. I don't wanna have that background music. So in this case, we're gonna check off Twitch VOD track, and that is going to be track one because it doesn't have the music in it. This same approach can be applied to recordings as well. As you can see, we can choose a specific audio track for that. It is very handy to say the least and keeps you out of copyright trouble. The next audio trick I have here for you guys is listening to your gameplay audio from the computer. Give it a try to have your audio go over HDMI. That's how I have my audio coming through for my setup right now. And the beauty of this is that I can actually hear my gameplay audio here while being able to hear alerts, Discord chat, Spotify, all at the same time. So to do that, we're gonna go back to our advanced audio properties and for the Elgato 4K S capture card that I have the game audio coming over HDMI on, I can set the audio monitoring to be monitored and output it. So that way it's still being recorded as a part of the stream or the video, but I also get to hear it at the same time with a pair of headphones that I might have plugged into the computer. If you're not hearing your audio, just make sure to double check your operating system level audio settings to ensure your audio is being routed to the correct location. Additionally here, I have also seen where people's capture card audio is delayed coming into their computer. So it's literally not synced up. So back in your advanced audio properties, you're gonna see the sync offset section. So under that, this is where you can set in milliseconds. So one second equals 1000 milliseconds. You wanna set how much the delay is. But there you guys have it. Those are all of your basic need to know audio settings within OBS Studio to get your audio sounding better for your videos and live streams. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Like the video, subscribe if you're new around here, and then watch this video if you're struggling to get your game and chat audio from the PlayStation 5 into your capture card, into OBS Studio, this video will help you out here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.